Um, so pitch rates, and um, this is good for you guys. One activator for, on the beer side is going to give you a pitch rate of six million cells per mil into five gallons. Um, are you guys familiar with the million cells per mil per degree Play-Doh? It's kind of the golden rule on pitching. Um, it's going to allow you to have the correct amount of doublings and really get into the kind of the sweet spot for that strain of yeast if you pitch it a million cells per mil per degree of Play-Doh. Now there's a few exceptions to that, but uh, everything but uh, Belgians and German wheats, a million cells per mil per degree Play-Doh is a great way to pitch. Um, and how do you know where to check? Um, when you take a gravity reading, you can take it in bricks, in original gravity, or in Play-Doh. Uh, so say you have a 1060, uh, what's that, in bricks, anybody? 1060 is going to be about, oh gosh, what do they call it? 17 bricks or something like that? It's about 16 Play-Doh. Um, so you can pitch at 16 million cells per mil per degree Play-Doh. Uh, that's with repitching. Uh, with our yeast has never touched hops, it's never been in an alcoholic solution, and we concentrate for viability, so you're getting pretty primo yeast. Um, we're comfortable with one activator up to 1060, 16 Play-Doh, 17, uh, 17 bricks. Um, upping the pitch rate is increasing the amount of yeast or the amount of fermentables. So they just buy like two? Well, yeah, you do two or a so you put two packets in? Yeah, uh, with the wine, one packet is usually fine. Um, uh, uh, just because wine strains like a longer fermentation profile. Um, I mean, the champagne is going to be two weeks, but the, some of mine went for four and a half. Um, before you before I racked them off okay. and got it off every bowl. So uh, it's just really going to depend on the strain and how fast that's going to ferment. Uh, but wine yeast is usually more alcohol tolerant, and you can. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's fine pitching a little lower in, for wine than it is for beer. For beer, um, you know, what you guys really should take away is, let's see, <laughs> it's uh, uh, 1060, below 1060 and fermented above 60 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, one activator. 1060 to 1075, two activators or one activator into a two liter starter. Uh, two liter starter is going to give you enough to have one double in, one full double in. So 100 billion cells is going to move into 200 billion cells. Uh, one liter starter kit is probably going to give you 1.3 billion cells. Um, I would never recommend doing anything smaller than two. How do you control the temp? Like I have mine in my house, where my house is. Uh, I have a chest freezer with a uh, thermostat control so I can dial my temp within one degree of where I want it to be. And okay. I do it a heat wrap inside that chest freezer and then set my chest freezer 15 degrees slower than I want my fermentation temperature. Okay. I'm just kind of curious how people did that. I get pretty nervy about it. So <laughs> whatever my house is, what it's going to ferment that. <laughs> if your house is pretty warm, you can choose a yeast strain based on uh, fermentation temperature. Okay. Uh, for beer, you know, if your house is 85, probably a great time to do a Belgian or a Saison. Uh, if your house is 45 and you lose your power, it's probably a really nice time to do it longer. <laughs> um, I'm planning on not having power for a long time. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, a, a nice six weeks at, you know, between 55 and 45 inside would make some great longer. <laughs> you, you might have run over this already with, with wine yeast and you're doing it at the low 60 degrees, say, should you add yeast nutrient, like in an incremental basis? I think you should ask, add yeast nutrient uh, to every batch you do. No just the, the big dose at the beginning, or should you um, add it, increments? Uh, I just do the big dose at the beginning. If I'm doing a really big beer, okay. and I can come back and hit that with oxygen again and more nutrients and do feeding, or if you start to see fermentation slow down before you want it to, you can add nutrients. Uh, you can dose it, but I do it five minutes before the end of the boil. Okay. Um, uh, in nutrients are really essential in wine because it's uh, wine must is more nutrient deficient than beer wort. Um, so using nutrients in your wine is really, really going to help the yeast out. Would you do that exact same thing for trying to do a mead? Yes, absolutely. Is there any way you can speed up a mead? I'm sure you could over pitch and push your temperature. Um, I'm not sure what that would do to your flavor profile. Um, um, but a, a lot of mead is the aging after fermentation and finish. Um, uh, and I'm not sure what to do that. Uh, 
make sure you make more meat so it's coming off more regularly, maybe. So it should take more. Yeah, it's well, it's with meat you can do dry meat or sweet meat. Uh, sweet meat is going to be an ale strain. Dry meat is going to be a wine strain. Um, the wine strains are going to ferment out a lot lower than the ales, uh, and so if you want to back sweeten your meat or cider um, with juice at the end to control your level of sugar, you can go into a wine strain and have it ferment all the way out. You can transfer it off, uh, make sure the yeast is asleep or done, and then back sweeten the taste. Um, or if you you can choose a strain that's going to leave some residual sugars if it's you know really special kind of honey or special kind of apple and you like the flavor from that apple and you want to leave some behind for sweet meat that's when you use an ale strain using an ale strain the ale strain's not going to ferment out as low as the wine strain so you're going to have some in the back but you're never going to be able to really dial your uh, your residual sweetness in it's going to vary a little bit based on the cost. good um, so pitch rates, 1060 to 1075, two activators, one activator, two liter starter, 1075 into 1090, three activators, or one starter, uh, 2.7 liter starter, three liter starter. Um, then below that we have propagation for starters, so when people come in and start asking you guys questions about how to do a starter, ales and lagers, always 70 degrees on a starter. All you're trying to do is push growth, you don't care about the flavor. Um, and then you want to, uh, uh, always at 70, always at 1040 for any sacr saccharomyces strain. Uh, you want to have it at 1040 uh, gravity. Uh, the easiest way to get 1040 is to use a metric system. So if you're using one liter of, a, it's a one liter starter, use a tenth of your liquid volume in DME, and that'll give you 1040. So if you use one liter, you use a 100 milliliters of DME. That's going to give you 1040. Two liters, how much DME would you use? Anybody? 200? 200. <laughs> um, so you'd use 200 milliliters. That's going to get you up to 1040. Uh, not a fan of doing high gravity starters. Some people will be like, well, I can only do a one liter starter, but I'll do it at 1080 instead of 1040. There's more sugar to eat. The cells will eat more sugar, but then you're going to lose your viability because it's going to be in an alcoholic solution. You know, 7% alcoholic solution in your starter, and that's not beneficial to the yeast. Do you decant off that when you that starter? It really depends, honestly. Um, the biggest thing for starters is not letting them starve. So it's taking a density reading or a gravity reading. When I say density, that's the same thing as gravity and that's the same thing as gravity. So taking a density reading, make sure you're not at terminal gravity. Um, you know, we see people you know, on Twitter or something say, oh, I'm making a starter Wednesday night for a brew next Sunday. And they're doing you know, a one liter starter. The yeast is going to, one activator pack is going to eat through a liter in about 12 hours. Um, and then it's going to be outside at 70 degrees from you know, Thursday at noon until Sunday with no food and in a warm environment and that's just really going to beat up your culture. How do you know when it needs more food? Um, by gravity. Right. So by taking a density reading uh, with the hydrometer. Okay. Um, uh, rule of thumb is 80% of um, expected density drop. So if you're expecting a drop from um, 1060 to 1010, that's a 50 point drop. When you're at 80% of that 50 point, so say 40, rough math, probably awful. But uh, uh, when you've dropped 40 points out of the 50 points you can drop, then it's time to put it into a, pitch it into your beer or put it into the fridge and make it go to sleep with temperature. Um, I like to pitch metabolically active yeast um, to decrease my lag time. So when I do a starter, um, I don't pay a lot for yeast. So honestly, I don't do a lot of starters. Anything left over in the fridge, Friday's fair game. Um, so I'll do a um, I'll do a starter and try to time my starter so it's dropping. It's, I've had a lot of growth and I'm I haven't hit TG before I pitch it into my board. So I don't do TG. Um, a lot of people will do can't, and when I do gluten-free stuff for my friends, like gluten-free ciders, I will do can't our yeast. Uh, our yeast is not gluten-free. I'll throw it up twice on a gluten-free media and decant each time and 
the level of people we But if you are going to do that for your friends and they are very allergic to gluten, don't let them do it.